Hello ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys and abdi else that's watching. My name is Pauline Cordner and I'm a storyteller from Aberdeen in the northeast of Scotland. Now last summer I had an absolutely wonderful time at Strumpjaw Tree Fair telling stories with Mr John Rowe and unfortunately along with many other things the fair has been cancelled this year due to the virus. So I thought I might record a wee story. This is probably one of the stories that I would have told this year. It's a story that I got from Stanley Robertson, who um, taught many of us in the Northeast lots of songs and stories. He was a, a traveller and this is one of his called The Two Marys. Well, long, long ago in Scotland, there was a man, his wife and their wee daughter. Now for reasons that I wouldn't even go into. The lady died and the man had to find a new wife. And he went out one day, came back home to the house and when he came in he said to his daughter Mary, Mary, meet your new mother, your stepmother. And young Mary, who was the most kind-hearted, lovely girl that you could ever hope to meet, smiled and looked up from what she was doing. But standing in the doorway was this woman with a long nose and small pointed eyes and a small pinched mouth who said, hello, my dear. And when she stepped to the side and she said, this is my daughter. Her name is also Mary. And the first Mary, she looked up and she smiled at the girl that was to be her new stepsister. And whereas the first Mary was all smiles and rosy cheeks, standing next to her mother was this girl who was beautiful beyond measure. But there was a coldness in her face that unfortunately also reached to her heart. Time passed and unfortunately soon, the first Mary's father grew ill and died as well, leaving her at home, almost 16 years old, with her stepmother and the other Mary. And I'm sure you can imagine what happened. They made her cook. They made her clean. They made her work for them night and day. And soon she was thin and her hands were worn and sore and... She had lost the rosy glow to her cheeks, but she kept her positive thoughts and she kept the smile on her face and the kindness in her heart. Soon, it was the morning of her 16th birthday and although it was cold and snowing outside, the stepmother grabbed her by the shoulder and said, you're 16 now. I don't have to support you any longer. Now get out of my house. And Mary said, but, but why? This was my home. This was my father's home. Not anymore, it isn't. And she threw the girl's thin cotton cloak after her and slammed the door behind her. Well, what was young Mary to do? She decided that she would see if she could find herself a job and that she would head to the nearest town. She sort of knew where it was. She had been there a couple of times as a child with her father. And so in her thin wooden shoes and her cloak huddled round her, she started to walk along the road from their house that led to the town. She walked and she walked and she walked and it seemed like she walked for hours and hours and soon it started to get dark. Not only did it start to get dark, but this was winter and the snowflakes were already falling thickly on the ground around her. And she knew that if she didn't find shelter for the night, she would surely freeze to death. But then she saw at the side of the road what looked like a shed, a wooden shack. It had a roof. It would keep the rain and the snow off her. It wouldn't be very warm, but perhaps there would be some straw inside and that could keep her warm. 
So she crossed over a tiny little rickety wooden bridge over a stream and she approached the shack. As she got closer and closer, she heard a voice. Hello, said the voice, and welcome, said the voice. She looked around, but as it was getting dark, she couldn't possibly see who it was that was talking to her. And she was just about to reach out and open the door when a voice said, wait. She said, is there somebody there? Yes, said the voice. I'm standing right behind you. She turned round and there, just on the flat ground next to the shed, was a rocking chair. I don't see anyone, she said. Who's talking to me? It's me, said the rocking chair. And Mary stepped back in astonishment. She said, is this someone playing a trick? Who's really talking? And the rocking chair said, I'm a magical rocking chair. I don't belong to just anyone. I belong to Old Nick himself. Cloven Hoddy, the devil. And Mary took a step back. Well, I'm very pleased, pleased to meet, pleased to meet, pleased to meet you, she said. She had never met a talking rocking chair before. I tell you what, said the rocking chair, I am absolutely roasting. I am so hot. I feel like I am burning. It's very, very hot down there in hell, you know. I can quite imagine, said Mary. Could you do something for me, said the rocking chair. Down by the stream there, there's a bucket. You couldn't fill it with water and throw it over me, could you? Mary, who was kind-hearted, smiled and said yes. So she took off her wooden shoes and she picked up the bucket and she waded through, you know, you know, next to the stream, whenever there's cows, it's all muddy. And she walked through the mud out into the middle of the stream where the water was clear and pure. And she scooped up some cold, fresh water, came back and threw it over the rocking chair and it splashed and it hit the rocking chair and the rocking chair sizzled. Oh, said, that was wonderful. Thank you so much. Now, it said, you've done something good for me. I'm going to do something for you. In that shed is not what you think. If you go in there, you will eat well. You will spend the night safely and dry. However, the devil himself is in there. Do whatever you can to avoid dancing with him. Otherwise, you will belong to him forever. You must last until morning and then you will be safe. And Mary put on her old wooden shoes and thanked the rocking chair. She put her hand on the door handle. She opened the door of the old shack. But when she went in, there wasn't just a small wooden shack. There was a huge, great big ballroom with chandeliers dripping with diamonds and beautiful bright hangings on the wall and the ladies and the gentlemen who were dancing round and round and round to the music. They were dressed in satin gowns, velvet cloaks. She had never seen so much riches in her life. And she looked up at the end of the ballroom and up at the top was a band of tiny little dark creatures, each one playing a musical instrument or singing or... They were imps. They were the musicians of hell. And she smiled. But as she looked around the room, she looked further and she saw a long table and on that table was food. It was groaning with food. Food that she hadn't tasted in her life. There were all sorts of things there. And she grabbed some and she tasted it. And oh, food had never tasted so good. There were glasses of wine, there were sweetmeats, all sorts of things. And then she heard someone clear her voice, clear his throat. <clears> throat> and she turned round and standing behind her 
was a very tall, very handsome man. He had a beautifully combed beard, perfectly shaped eyebrows, dark, dark eyes. And a pair of little horns on his head, and as she looked down, cloven feet, and a red tail swishing from side to side. Yeah, that was him. Old Nick, cloven hoddy, the devil himself. And he said, Why, Mary, I am so pleased to meet you. Will you dance with me? And she said, I would love to dance with you. However, have you seen how I look? I cannot dance in these wooden shoes. Well, said the devil, you need not worry about that. <coughs> he clapped his hands and all of a sudden, puff, up appeared. Hello. Uh, One of the cobblers of hell. Hello, said the cobbler. What kind of shoes would you like? And Mary stared at the little creature with her mouth wide open. Um, I, I don't know. What? I, 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 May I suggest a nice pair of green silk shoes? Well, the, the, that would be that would be just lovely. And immediately, the little creature got out his tape measure and started measuring his feet. And then from out behind his back, he whipped out some green silk cloth. And he started pinning and stitching and hammering on the sole. And he said to Mary when they were finished, What do you think? And she said, Can I try them on? Of course she can, said the little one. She put the shoes on and she said, well, They're absolutely beautiful. But then she remembered what the rocking chair had said to her. Do not dance with the devil before dawn. So she said, I'm so sorry to bother you, but would it be possible to have the same ones in red? Certainly, said the cobbler of hell. And the same thing happened again. Out came the roll of cloth, out came the pins, and he stitched and he sewed and he hammered on the heel, and he even put on a few sparkling rubies as decorations. What do you think of them? They're beautiful, said Mary. And she put them on her feet. And away, puff, went the little creature. And standing behind her was the devil, and he said, Will you dance with me now, Mary? And she said, In these shoes I could dance all night, but, she said, Look at me. I'm wearing rags. I'm sorry, I couldn't possibly dance with such a fine gentleman as you. Don't worry about that, said the devil. Hello, said another little creature. I am. The tailor of hell, and I am here to make whatever your heart desired. <gasps> wow, she'd never had a new dress in her life. And then she looked at the little creature and she quite admired its red cape and she said, Would it be possible to have something in red velvet? Certainly, said the little creature. And all of a sudden, out from in behind his back, he got a roll of red velvet and he started stitching and he started sewing and he started measuring. And soon, in front of her, was the most beautiful red velvet dress she had ever seen in her whole life. That's very nice, said the cobbler of hell. Some of my best work, said the tailor of hell. And she slipped into a small changing room off to the side and she tried it on and she said it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen but yeah I don't know if velvet goes with silk I mean have you seen the shoes that the cobbler made me good point he said and from in behind his back he got another roll of fabric it was silk this time and he stitched and he sewed and he bent and then soon Mary was wearing the most beautiful silk dress you've ever seen Well, soon standing behind her was the devil and he said to her, Mary, will you dance with me? And she said, well, I would, but the thing is, I've been walking all day and I haven't had a bath and I'm in the state of my nails and don't worry, he said. And all of a sudden, Mary was in the most wonderful, luxurious bathroom that she'd ever seen in her whole life. And here was a great big bath full of bubble bath and all of a sudden, puff. Hey! said a little creature. Pedicure!
your time. And she lay in the bath as more of these beautiful little creatures bamfed around her. They brushed her hair. They scrubbed her back. They did her nails because of course there were the manicurists of hell. And soon she stepped out of the bath into a nice cuddly towel held out for her by one of the imps. And she put on her dress and her shoes again and wow, oh, what a difference, she said. With a flash, the bathroom disappeared and she was once standing in the ballroom in front of the devil and he said, now Mary, will you dance with me? And she said, oh, I would love to dance with you, but have you seen the state of my hair? Don't worry about that, said the devil. Hi, said another one of the little creatures. I'm the hairdresser of hell. What would you like? Well, she said, I have always dreamed of having golden ringlets. And out came the little creature with some rollers. Rollers were put in, she was pampered. You going anywhere nice on your holidays? <laughs> said the hairdresser of hell. Soon the ringlets were cascading down her shoulders and she said, I am ever so sorry, but um, I think they make me look a little bit fat. Oh no, they don't, said the little creature. No, she said, no. Any chance of you putting it in a bit of an updo, maybe something like a beehive? <gasps> okay, dokily, said the little creature and um, got to work putting a beehive into her hair and soon her hair was so high and posh and hair sprayed to the nines and Mary looked wonderful. The little creature went and sat with her friends and then the devil appeared and he said, Mary, will you dance with me? And she said, oh, I would love to, but, um, well, um, oh, oh, look at all the other ladies. They've got beautiful sparkly eyes and, and lips and ro I've never had makeup in my life, sir. And I have always, always wanted to look so beautiful. Certainly, said the devil. He clapped his hands. Hello! I'm the makeup artist of hell, said another little limp. And that little limp soon got busy with Makeup, foundation, blusher, contouring, eyeshadow, mascara, glitter, more glitter. And soon Mary was just the most beautiful thing, even more beautiful than she had been at the start of her story. And the rose in her cheeks was back. And the devil turned round and said, Mary, will you dance with me? And she said, oh, I would love to, but, ha, <laughs> um, um, some jewellery, perhaps, said the devil. And he clapped his hands. Hello, said the next tiny little creature. I am the jeweller of hell. What can I get for you? And soon she was trying on necklaces. Soon she was trying on earrings. Soon she was trying on crowns. All covered in diamonds and rubies. These sapphires really bring out the colour of your eyes, said the little creature. There were rings on her fingers and rings on her toes and... She had never felt like that in her life. But then the devil turned up and he said to her, Mary, will you dance with me? And she said, uh, um, I would love to, your majesty, but <sighs> I'm afraid my breath does rather smell. Don't worry, said the devil, and he clapped his hands. And then, hello the tiniest creature of all. I am the dentist of hell. And the tiny little creature got busy inside her mouth <coughs> with tiny little brushes, tiny little sticks for poking and stroking and picking and soon Mary she had the 
most beautiful set of white teeth you'd ever seen. And the tiny little creature went to join his friends. And the devil said, now, Mary, now will you dance with me? And he reached out his hand towards her. And Mary heard to her great relief. cock a doodle do For the sun had risen. And the devil shook his hand. And he said, too late, too late. Mary turned, leaving the ballroom behind her, as all the ladies and gentlemen started to disappear into wisps of smoke, as did the food and the hangings and the chandeliers. And the devil stood there smiling and said, I was too late. And she turned the door handle and she left the small empty shed behind her. The rocking chair was gone, but her clothes weren't, and her shoes weren't, and the jewels weren't. And she didn't much fancy walking into town with all this finery, so she went back home. And when she knocked on the door, her stepmother saw her in the beautiful red satin shoes, the satin dress, the jewels, the hair. The glitter! Oh my dear, she said, what happened to you? Come in, come in and tell me where all this came from. Well, Mary did. She was sat down, but they rushed her to tell her story. And she explained how she'd gone and how she'd been speaking to the rocking chair and how in she had gone and, and, and there was the devil and how his many imps had provided her with everything that she needed. Well, how very interesting, said the stepmother. And that very afternoon, the stepmother and their daughter spent time making themselves look beautiful because they had a date with the devil. They left the house that evening, leaving Mary alone and the stepmother and the dark-hearted Mary made their way until they saw a shed with a rocking chair and they went towards the house. But then the rocking chair said, wait, stop, stop. And they turned and they looked and they said, who are you? And the rocking chair said, I am the devil's rocking chair. I am ever so hot. Please, please go and pour some cold water on me. Well, the step Mother and dark-hearted Mary bickered amongst themselves as to who would pick up the bucket and eventually dark-hearted Mary went forward. But do you think that she went through the mud to the nice clear water? No. She collected some of the muddy water with pondweed in it and threw that over the chair. Right, said the rocking chair. In you go. There was no warning for Mary of the dark heart and her stepmother. And in they went to the magnificent ballroom. They tasted the fine foods and then they turned round and here was the devil. Will you dance with me, Mary? He said. Oh, I, I, I well, um, I, I think, I think, um, I think, do you have any jewels? And he said, how about some new shoes? Oh, new shoes would be wonderful. Hello, said the first of the little creatures. How about these ones I made yesterday? The green, green silk. Dark hearted Mary's eyes opened. She tried them on. They were a perfect fit. Immediately she was happy. She was ready to dance with the devil. But then the devil said, oh, already, he said, already. The mother said, hang on, see what you can get. See what else you can get. But a new dress, said the devil. Immediately, Puff. hello, said the next of the little demons. I've got this really nice red velvet dress. I think it'll look great on you. Oh, yes, said Mary. Oh, yes, I'll have that. And she tried it on. Well, she didn't much need a pad pedicure or a manicure. And her hair was already beautifully done. So was her makeup. And the next to come along was this little guy. There you go. The jeweler of hell. 
I know what will suit you. Soon she was dripping with diamonds and sapphires and rubies, necklaces, rings, earrings, bracelets, the whole lot. The devil reached out his hand. The dentist didn't even get a chance this time because dark-hearted Mary was all for dancing with the devil. And he reached out and he took her hand. He took her into his arms and he danced round and round and round. And of course, it was nowhere near dawn. And as they danced, they went faster and faster and faster. And Mary and her stepmother, who was standing at the side, started to feel a little bit hot. They started to feel whew, very warm. And as she danced faster and faster and faster with the devil, she went red hot then yellow hot and then white hot and suddenly there was a bright and brilliant flash of light and soon the shed where Mary of the dark heart her mother and the devil had been was nothing but ash which crumbled to a powder to the ground I think you can imagine where Mary and her stepmother ended up. But kind-hearted Mary. Well, she wasn't entirely surprised when they didn't come home. She knew that the trainer would have tried to warn them. And she lived happily ever after. And so did I. Goodbye. <laughs> I hope you like that story. Um, if you like these stories, uh, there's a lot more at Tag Team Tales at the World Storytelling Cafe and also on my Facebook page and YouTube channel. I am Pauline Cordner, a Scottish storyteller, and I do hope that you all have a lovely summer and hopefully I will see you at Strumpshaw Tree Fair in 2021. Take care. Goodbye. <laughs>